This video will be an example of the linear variational method using our equations from the previous video for the case of an orthonormal two basis function basis set. So the example we're going to do is the particle in a slanted box. So we know the particle in a box functions exactly. We know psi 1 and our phi 1 and phi 2, square root of 2 over L sine pi x over L, half a sine wave inside the box and 2 pi x over L, a full sine wave inside the box. So our Hamiltonian is going to depend on our new potential energy, which forms this slant inside the box, which shifts this from a, a model system that we know exactly to something that we can't solve exactly, but we're going to approximate using this linear variational method. So V of x, our potential energy, is going to start at 0 on the, on the left side of the box and go up to a value V0 on the right side of the box and do so linear in between, linearly in between. Our potential energy thus will be V0 x over L, length of the box being L. So our Hamiltonian is going to be minus h bar squared over 2 times mass, second derivative with respect to x, plus V0 x over L. So the energy of our first state we know is the kind of reference Hamiltonian there acting on it. The energy of our first state is h squared over 8ml squared for the particle in a box. And the energy for our phi 2 in the particle in a box model system was 4 times e1. Our trial wave function here is going to be some coefficient c1 times phi 1 plus some coefficient c2 times phi 2. We're going to allow these first two states to mix together and allow us to approximate a better possible solution to the particle in the slanted box. So we'll remind ourselves from the linear variational method, we have two kinds of integrals, overlap integrals and Hamiltonian integrals, also matrix elements of the overlap matrix and the Hamiltonian matrix. Overlap integrals being integral of psi star i psi j over all space which in this case is going to be the Kronecker delta because these two states are orthonormal. They're normalized individually and orthogonal to one another. So 1 for i equals j and 0 for i not equal j. And our Hamiltonian matrix elements will be the integral over all space psi star i h acting on psi j. The energy of our two states that we're going to get is our formula from the previous video on the secular determinant. Energy equals the average energy of these two states, h11 plus h22 over 2, plus or minus square root of half the difference of these states squared, h11 minus h22 over 2 squared, plus the coupling between these two states, h12 squared. All right, so what are our Hamiltonian matrix elements? So for our diagonal elements, h11 and h22, we have that that is going to be the integral of the expectation value of the kinetic energy operator plus the potential energy operator. So kinetic energy is actually the energy of the particle in a box system. That's the energy of the Hamiltonian where we don't have any potential. So this energy is actually the energy of this Hamiltonian where we don't have any potential. So this expectation value of the kinetic energy is actually this E sub n, E1 for phi 1, e2 for phi 2, plus the integral for the expectation value of the potential energy. The integral from 0 to L, the entire domain of the wave function, with respect to x, times our wave function is real, so we don't have to worry about complex conjugates. So we're just going to have psi v psi, square root of 2 over L, sine n pi x over L, times v naught x over L times square root of 2 over L sine n pi x over L. So hnn squared, it's going to be n squared times e1. So e1 is this, e2 is 2 squared times this. So our hnn is going to be n squared e1 plus 2 over L, this squared, factor it out, times v naught over L, factor out those constants. And then our integral of x times sine squared n pi x over L is going to be L squared over 4, which was from our video on the average position values of the particle in a box. 
So this L squared over four cancels with those two L's. This two cancels with that four to leave a two in the denominator. So our H11 and H22 are going to equal the energy of that individual basis function in the particle in a box model plus one half V naught. So they feel their original energy plus half uh, or the average energy of this linear function sloping from side to side. All right, now the critical part comes into play. We need the coupling uh, element here, the Hamiltonian integral for H12. So we need uh, the integral of, of phi star one times kinetic energy operator acting on phi two. This is actually the particle in a box Hamiltonian acting on phi two, then times phi one. So for reasons that these two functions are orthogonal to one another, and this function is an eigenfunction of that operator, this whole integral ends up being zero. You can do that integral yourself if you'd like, um, but you'll see that it ends up coming out to be zero. So the coupling element is all gonna come from our potential energy expectation value here. So we're gonna have the integral from zero to L with respect to X of square root of two over L sine pi X for N equals one, V naught X over L potential operator times square root of two over L sine two pi X over L for N equals two. All right, we can do the same kind of factoring out of constants that we did over here. We get H12 equals two over L times V naught over L times integral from zero to L X times sine pi X over L times sine two pi X over L with respect to X. If you look up this kind of an integral in an integral table or an integral calculator, the value you will get for that definite integral is minus 8L squared over 9 pi squared. So this L squared will cancel with those two L's. The L's will go away. And the value we'll get, this 8 times that 2, will get negative 16 over 9 pi squared times V naught. So pi is about 3-ish. Pi squared is slightly less than 10. So this is like minus 16 over 90. So this is about 1 sixth times, negative 1 sixth times V naught. So smaller in magnitude than the perturbation caused over here, but still definitely some non-zero amount of coupling going on. All right, so now we just need to cal calculate our three terms that go into our energy expression, the average, half of the difference, and the coupling element. H11 plus H22 over two is one half E1 plus V naught over two plus four E1 plus V naught over two. That's equal to five halves E1 plus V naught over two. So the average of the, the energy of these two states plus half of our wall, linear wall that's going up, our linear slope. H11 minus H22 over two is equal to one half E1 plus V naught over two minus four E naught, sorry, four E1 minus V naught over two. Those two V naughts cancel what we're left with is negative three halves E1. So now calculating our final energy of our states, this is going to be that the energy of the plus and minus states are two states that result from our two trial basis functions and our trial wave function is five halves E1 plus V naught over two plus or minus the square root of three halves E1 squared plus 16 over nine pi squared V naught squared. So we have that the energy of the plus state is equal to E2 plus V naught over two plus some value determined by the strength of the coupling. And the energy of the negative state equals E1 plus V naught over two minus some amount caused by the strength of the coupling. So for modest values of V naught, this coupling is gonna be pretty small compared to E1. So for most cases, the energies are gonna be pretty similar to E1 and E2. If this is a small slope, then we're not gonna change our wave functions a lot. But the bigger the slope gets, the bigger this coupling element gets, the bigger the value of mu gets, and the more the energy of the negative state is gonna go down relative to E1 plus V naught over two, and the more this state is gonna go up relative to E2 plus V naught over two.